In this episode, SCO loses for good, Linux malware, and chromoting. Quicksurf Internet Media presents Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, I'm your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Phoenix, Arizona, here in Studio C1 at Quicksurf Internet Media. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to visit techpodcast.com and check out all the other awesome technology-related shows over there. Let's go... Let's go ahead and get to the stories for Season 10, Episode 17. From CNETnews.com, there's a story, Judge Deals Possibly Final Blow to SCO Over Linux. This we've been covering, uh, following this story for quite some time, uh, years actually, and finally, SCO's long-running campaign against Linux may have finally been dealt a death blow. Late Thursday, the judge presiding over the company's legal battle with Novell rejected SCO's request for a new trial and upheld an April jury decision that determined Novell, not SCO, is the rightful owner of key Unix copyrights. SCO argues that it is entitled to judgment as a matter of law because the verdict cannot be squared with the overwhelming evidence and the law, Judge Ted Stewart wrote in his decision. The court respectfully disagrees. The jury found Novell's version of facts to be more persuasive. This conclusion is well supported by the evidence. There was substantial evidence that Novell made an intentional decision made an intentional decision to retain ownership of the copyrights. Therefore, SCO is not entitled to a new trial. So, hopefully this will be the end. They may try another stab at it, but it looks like uh, SCO is, you know, doing its final death flails before it fades off into oblivion and we can all start talking about something else. Let's go ahead and talk about our sponsor for this episode, GoToAssist Express. If you provide technical support to clients, colleagues, friends, or family, have you found an easy, cost-effective way to support them without being there in person? The best way for me to provide technical support is to do it online with GoToAssist Express. I've been able to help friends learn how to use new software and fix family computer problems without being there in person. GoToAssist Express lets you easily view and control any other computer online so you can quickly resolve technical issues. Whether you're in customer support, technical consulting or management, or just a computer guru, GoToAssist Express will help you increase revenue, reduce travel and support time, and service more clients. It's brought to you by Citrix. You know GoToAssist Express will be easy and secure. My audience can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. I repeat, my audience can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. From ZDNet, there's a story here. Linux infection proves Windows malware monopoly is over. The author here, Ed Bott, writes, Every time I write about Windows security software, I get a predictable flood of responses from Linux advocates who claim that they don't need any such protection. Today comes a shining example of why they're wrong. If you downloaded and installed the open source Unreal IRC server in the last eight months or so, you've been pwned. Yes, pwned. He quotes the official announcement. Hi all, this is very embarrassing. We found out that the Unreal 3.2.8.1 tar.gz file on our mirrors has been replaced quite a while ago with a version with a backdoor Trojan in it. This backdoor allows a person, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, basically. Now, a couple details he points out. It appears that the replacement of this file appeared in November, occurred in November 2009, at least on some mirrors, and nobody noticed it until now. Why? Because it wasn't being scanned. Nobody was looking. They assumed it was safe. Now, even more interesting, uh, it says the Windows, SSL, and non-SSL versions are not affected. Gee, I wonder why. Because the Windows version is constantly virus scanned, and if something like that were to happen, it would be detected within days, if not hours. So, uh, yeah, it's this is like one of those things where you're like going, uh-huh, mm-hmm, yep, yep, just because you're using Linux doesn't mean you're secure. There you go. 
from CNETnews.com. There's a story. VMware teams up with Novell on SUSE Linux. VMware will standardize its virtual appliance-based products on Novell SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, a move intended to help ward off a growing threat from Microsoft. Under the partnership, customers buying certain vSphere licenses will be eligible to receive a subscription to SUSE Linux Enterprise Server patches and updates for SLES instances deployed in vSphere virtual machines. The companies are also working to make it easier to port SLES-based virtual machines across clouds. So that's very cool. From eWeek, there's a story, HP buys Linux and virtualization tech from Phoenix. Hewlett Packard agreed on June 10th to purchase assets owned by Phoenix Technologies, including a Linux-based operating system and client virtualization software in a deal worth $12 million in cash. The products in question are Phoenix's Hyperspace, Hypercore, and Phoenix Flip. Hyperspace is a Linux-based operating system that allows a PC to boot rapidly, a key capability for portable devices such as netbooks and laptops. The other Phoenix assets acquired by HP center on client virtualization, including HyperCore, which enables hyperspace to run specialized core services alongside Windows. So, very interesting. Uh, I'm curious to see what HP is going to do with it, and I'm even more curious why Phoenix didn't hold on to it. But everybody does something for some reason. It's just not always obvious. From PCMag.com, there's a story, Chrome OS to support legacy PC apps via Chromoting. I love it, Chromoting. Now, this is actually not running the app locally there on the Chrome OS installation. Uh, basically, details on this are very scant, but it allows you to run legacy Windows apps via some type of RDB connect, RDP connection to another computer, so you're not actually running a Windows application there on your netbook, but uh, we'll keep an eye out on this uh, for any new developments. From the register over at the register.co.uk, there's a story, Adobe euthanizes Flash 10.1 for 64-bit Linux. On Thursday, the company took a beta tag off the 32-bit Flash Player 10.1 for Windows, Linux, and Mac, and it released a slew of security updates for 10.0.45.2 and earlier. But at the same time, it posted a statement to the Adobe Labs page announcing the end of the Flash 10.1 for Linux 64-bit Linux beta. The company says it intends to offer 64-bit Linux support in a future release, but nobody knows because they've basically closed all the f or set all the forms to read only, so nobody can even really talk about this there on their forms. We'll keep an eye out on it. Um, from what I understand, they have every intention of, of releasing a 64-bit Linux version of Flash, just not soon. Bummer. From ZDNet in the Linux and open source section uh, run by Dana Blakenhorn and Paul Rooney, the, there's a blog post here entitled The Coming Linux Shakeout. And uh, this is a very interesting read. I completely agree with uh, what they're saying. It's basically saying, look, you know, there's going to come some point where we're going to start to see distributions shake each other out and we're going to end up with only two or three distributions at most. I think it's very much already along its way because you've basically got Red Hat and Red Hat based distributions, Debian based distributions, and everything else is based off of uh, Novell SUSE that's of any major concern. And those are the, really the big, ba the big three there. Now out of the Debian, Ubuntu is the biggest one, but, uh, you know, Red Hat, Debian, SUSE, I don't see anything else making any kind of headway outside of those three. So, uh, be interesting to see. 10 Things Not to Like About Ubuntu 10.04. This is from ZDNet. Um, basically, it's a 10 things list. Um, half of them are like, eh, okay, nitpicky stuff, but uh, pretty interesting. Check it out. That'll pretty much do it for this edition of Linux News Log. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes at linux.quickshift.com. Please update your RSS feeds if you have not already done so. And you can follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Adrian underscore Bacon. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.